Welcome in everybody. I'm Jen. This is Zoe. We're really glad you can join us for camp today. So today we're going to be making a yarn art canvas. This is, um, I'll move it up a little bit closer so you can see, just shapes made out of yarn. So gather up your yarn. I'm gonna go through the supplies real quick and we'll get started. All right. So today we're going to need a canvas and you can have any size canvas that you have laying around or if you ordered the camp kit, the one that comes in there, I believe is the eight by eight canvas. Now, obviously the bigger the canvas, the longer it's gonna take to do, smaller the canvas, you know, quicker it'll go. So you're gonna need your canvas and then a variety of yarn. So I've got a few colors over here and then I've got a black and a white that I did for the background. Now, here's something cool about the canvas to keep in mind. If you don't wanna do a yarn background like we have done here, I think Zoe is going to do yarn shapes and then she's gonna use her Creatology markers to make a decorative background on her canvas. So that's totally cool. Um, I've got a couple of brushes here. So I think, again, if you have the camp kit, um, there's a little pack of brushes that came in it. Um, you can use probably one of the medium size flat brushes. This is a different Creatology pack of brushes I got mine from. You'll need a pencil for sketching out your design. Um, your Creatology sequin glue that came in your kit. If you don't have the Creatology glue, you can also use a basic white glue or Elmer's glue. Um, you're going to want a popsicle stick or something to help you hold the yarn down and then your handy dandy Creatology scissors. All right, and then any questions before I get started? Yes, we have a couple of questions. Okay. So um, a very popular one here is, what do we do if we don't have a canvas? Okay, so if you don't have a canvas, you can do several different things. You can use like a sturdy cardboard or some sort of um, foam board, poster board, anything that has some rigidity to it. So the best thing to use, um, I think, is just some recycled cardboard. And that could be, you know, from a box or it could be like a cereal box or a cracker box or something. Um, the thicker it is, it'll, the better it'll hold up with the glue. Because remember, glue has moisture in it. So if you put it on regular paper or really thin cardboard, it's gonna wanna warp um, the cardboard a little bit. So the best thing you can use is something that's a little bit more sturdy. Um, Perfect. And about um, yarn colors, do we have to use the same amount of colors and the same um, colors that you're using or could we just use all different sorts of colors? All different kinds of colors, all different kinds of amounts. This project was really born out of uh, use of leftover yarn pieces. I mean, it's like we have so many yarn projects and, um, you know, sometimes you're making pom-poms or, uh, you know, yarn butterflies or whatever with your yarn and you end up with like little clippings or, you know, ends of a skein of yarn. And the art project really allows you to kind of take those leftover pieces and um, put them together into something really cool. So. It's, it's an upcycling, basically. Perfect. Um, we're asking, uh, someone asked if um, acrylic paint could be an option as well as substitution. A substitution for what, sorry? For the colors, for the markers that you have there. Oh, yeah, for the markers. Absolutely. Yeah, you can use the Creatology paint. You can use acrylic paint. Um, you know, yeah, again, you don't have to use paint at all. So. If, if you want to follow the original project, it's really, you know, you can kind of see these are these are yarn areas too. So all I've done here is just color blocked the background. I made my circles and then I filled in the background with different colored yarn. You can use one color. Um, I think actually the project has one color. I did two colors because, you know, that's kind of cool. So do as many colors as you want. You want to make a rainbow, you want to do a monochromatic, um, for, you know, monochromatic, it would be different shades of that same color. Um, yes, Zoe, do you have a question? Yes. What's your question? Well, it's something different. Okay. 
What if you don't have yarn and a canvas? Can you just draw? Yeah, that's right. If you don't have yarn or canvas, you could just use your Creatology markers and draw on your cardboard. Or paint. Or paint. That's right. Or you can use string. So there's different kinds of string and twine. So if you don't have leftover yarn, you have twine instead, that's okay. And if you only have one color, you can still come up with cool patterns and then use your markers to kind of draw uh, contrasting colors and make that color stand out. Um, can, can I do a heart? You want to do a heart? Yes, we can talk about that. All right. Any more questions before we get started? Um, no, that was a great question, Zoe. Um, but no, we don't have any more questions. Just a reminder to everyone though, because uh, I see a lot of people don't have the materials. You can either do what Jen just suggested, or you can also sit down and watch today and um, watch the recording um, later on this week when you, when you do have the materials as well. Oh yeah, watching the recording is always an option. Um, we do record all of our free classes and you can find them uh, generally 24 to 48 hours after the class, they'll be on our website, michaels.com slash classes. I put that in the chat, but I will put it in there again for everyone. Awesome. So, so, so do you want to draw your shapes now? I want to draw like. So remember, okay, so this is a good, this is a good point to, to talk about here. The key to your shapes, hold on one second, you're going to draw everything with pencils first, but let me, let me give the directions and then we can start drawing. So the key to remember here is this yarn, although bendy, can, can be difficult with some intricate shapes. So one of the reasons that I've done the circle here, as you can see, I think the purple one is probably one of the best examples. When you make a circle shape or a cinnamon roll or something like a spiral, you get a really nice tight um, yarn design. So you see how there's like no canvas showing through. And then when you start to get into these funky patterns like you have to do for the background, you can kind of see a little bit of white peeping through. And that's because I've picked a more complicated pattern for the background shapes to fill in behind the circles. So keep that in mind when you're drawing and designing your canvas. You want to stick with the more simple shapes and less detail and then really focus on your colors and how you make your colors go together and how that can make these shapes really pop out and give you a very interesting piece of artwork when you're done. So if you wanna do hearts and stars and circles and triangles and squares, that's all fine. But the more sharp the angle, the more difficult it is to manipulate that yarn into a nice tight um, angle. Okay, does that make sense, Zoe? All right, so you wanna do a heart? Mm -hmm. Do you wanna sketch it on your, on your board? Do you remember the rule about sketching and how when you're sketching something, you go really lightly so that in case you have to erase? Okay, all right. I'm gonna get my canvas started while you're doing that, okay? Okay. All right. Do we have any more questions out there while we're working along? Um, not right now, I'll let you know. Okay, great. Um, all right, so I would say, while I'm getting my canvas ready here, hopefully you guys have found a surface to put this on um, if you didn't have the canvas already. And then I would just say gather your yarn and gather as many yarn colors as you have or want, um, you know, let the design of, or let the color of your yarn kind of, kind of guide you in your design. If you have a lot of dark colors and maybe a couple of light colors, then you're going to want to do like what I've done here, where you keep the dark colors inside a lighter color. Like here's some light colors and it wouldn't have looked nearly as good against that white if I hadn't put the green. And over here, the green wouldn't have looked as good against the black if I hadn't put the purple. And, and that, that light and dark variation is what's gonna really help your picture pop out. So purple is one of the colors that looks best against both the white and the dark. And that's why I picked the purple to wrap the two shapes that touch both sides. Now, again, if you're doing the same background, you don't have to get that complicated with it. Um, and again, you can mix your colors any way you want. 
but I just wanted to kind of explain my reasoning here for putting these brighter colors against the darker colors. That's in art, that's what's really there to help make those um, pictures and shapes that you're doing pop off of the canvas and stand out. All right, are you not happy with your heart? No. Okay, all right, we're redrawing our heart. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with my same kind of basic pattern over here because I wanna, I wanna give you guys a couple of hacks. So something to think about, especially if you're drawing circles, but even if you're drawing hearts, if you don't feel comfortable drawing it freehand, um, like the magnificent Zoe is doing over here, you can use things like cups or your glue bottle or the straight edge of your popsicle stick to kind of help you when you're designing your artwork. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Remember to go light, okay? Okay. Okay. So if I'm gonna do a few circles, I'm gonna do a big circle here. So I put my cup upside down on my canvas and I'm just gonna carefully draw around the edge and I'm just gonna let the edge of the cup guide my pencil. And then now, I'm sorry, Zoe. Now I have a perfect circle on my canvas. And then I can take the bottom side of the cup, which is smaller and place it in the middle of this circle. And I can do the same thing again, where I go around the bottom, around the bottom. And then I have a circle inside my circle. And then if I want an even smaller circle, I can take something like this and do the same thing. And it's kind of like a bullseye, just going in, in, in. And don't worry if you mess up on your sketch a little bit. And I should have told you this, Zoe. If your sketch isn't perfect, that's okay. Look, see how mommy put the, it goes all wonky on the side. You can just kind of get the general idea of the circle like that. I'm gonna borrow your eraser. And then you can erase out what you don't like. And then if it's still not perfect, it's okay because when you start wrapping that yarn in there, it's gonna cover up your drawing anyway. Your drawing is just a template. It's a guideline for you once you put that yarn down because your yarn is tricky, right? And it's not gonna wanna do exactly what you tell it to do. So your, your circle is gonna be, your circle is gonna vary. Even if I draw a perfect circle on my canvas, it might be a little different when I get it here in the yarn because the yarn is just different than drawing with pencil. Why does it keep on going sideways? I don't know, but you know what? That's a really good template start. And if you're happy with the size and the shape of that heart, why don't you draw a couple more shapes and then we can start putting glue on it and, um, and putting your yarn down. Now something else, you, oh, you only wanna do a heart. Okay, that's fine. Are you happy with that heart? Okay, if you're happy with the heart, then if you'll give me just a second to finish my pattern, then um, we'll get glue in here. Jen, we have a suggestion from Pepper. Um, so if you want to make like it more of a complicated shape, um, the suggestion is to color the area in with the same color yarn. So you don't notice the canvas um, through the, the yarn. Um, yes, that's absolutely something you can do. And that's one of the things that these markers are for too, is if you want to mask, especially because the canvas is light and this color right here is dark. And, and there's also tricks like where you can finish up the edges with yarn and do various things. But yes, that is an amazing suggestion. And um, we have a question. Uh, it looks like several um, people here only have one color yarn. Do you have any suggestions for them? Yeah, so if you only have one color of yarn, um, my instinct is to have you do what Zoe's doing where you're drawing just your single shape that you wanna focus on and you're putting your yarn that's whatever color inside that shape. And then we'll do a different, we'll do a different treatment to the outside. So instead of putting the yarn background on it, you can take your colors or your paints, whichever you have, and you can, um, you can just decorate the outside with a color that looks good with that yarn that's in the in your shape. 
Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm almost done here. I think, I think I'm going to go crazy here and do a different, I'm doing, I'm finding all the circular things on my desk here to give me some different circles. Yes. I know I use that circle too. Okay. <clears throat> and you can always, especially with, with when you're using shapes like this, you can always add on. So if I get going here and I just want to do a small color in the middle, even though I haven't drawn a circle, I can stop that color and I can start up a new color. And you know, you can even um, get real crazy and you can do straight lines of yarn down across your circle and you can do different colors as you go across. It, you can make this, this is why I love yarn art. You can make this as complicated or as simple as you want to. All right. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start putting some yarn down on one of my shapes. So for this part, you're going to want, um, I have a cup and some paper towels and some water because what's going to happen is you're going to use the glue and then you're going to take your brush and kind of like brush out the glue. But eventually your brush is going to get kind of sticky with the glue. So I like to just keep it in some water and then dry it off really good um, before putting more glue on there. If you don't dry it off, then um, the water will make your glue run. So, all right. And I have a couple of different size brushes because it's really nice for the circles uh, when you're starting out to have the bigger brush. But as you get into these more intricate circles, the little brush is really nice to have. All right, Zoe, are you ready? Have you picked, do you know what colors you're going to start with? Are you going to, what color are you going to make that inner heart? I really want blue though. You want blue? I have a really dark blue. Do you want yeah. this really dark blue? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll do dark, dark blue. Here, can you cut it with the scissors? Yes. Like snip here? it. Yep, right there. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so I take a little bit of yarn. You don't have to do it this way. I like to take some of the yarn off of the yarn skein because it's a little bit easier to work with and you don't have to worry about your yarn rolling off your table, um, which always annoys me. All right, let me have the scissors. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your yarn and that you wanna use and you're only gonna put glue on the part that you want that color to be on. So let me get some paper towels. So I can get my brush ready. Okay. Give me like right here or here. We're gonna, st so this is the other thing is I recommend starting in the middle. So you always start in the middle and work your way out. It gives a nice, um, nice way to work. It, it can get kind of complicated if you try to go from the outside in. Not saying you can't, it just makes it a little more complicated. So I put a little bit of glue. I'll bring it up a little bit so you can see it. I put a little bit of glue here in the middle heart. So then Zoe, you're going to take your brush and you're just going to paint the glue inside that middle heart. And don't worry if you get glue outside of that heart because we're going to cover that part up with yarn, okay? Okay. So you just, you're painting the glue inside of the heart, but don't make it too thin because you I want the yarn. Here. That one's good. I'll let you do the next one, okay? Okay. All right. That one's really so, Jen, um, what kind of glue should we use? Um, would a glue sticks work as well? What about hot glue? Um, I would not recommend hot glue, and a glue stick is probably not going to have enough moisture to hold the yarn down. So, I would recommend a white glue, and it can be any kind. I've got the Creatology sequin and glitter glue. You can use the the um, the one that's kind of like a paste that has the brush, that one will work too. Um, hold on, I'll explain it. Um, or, you know, any like Elmer's glue, paper glue is what I would recommend. I would not try to use a hot glue or a paper glue, a glue stick. All right, so next the thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, our popsicle stick and it can be any size. If you don't have a popsicle stick, you can actually use the back of your brush and you're just going to start the yarn. I like to start with a point. So I started with the point of the heart and I'm just gonna bring the yarn around. And again, with the, the pointy 
the pointier the design, the more difficult it is to manipulate that yarn into that shape. And I'm just gonna bring it around like this. Is that okay? Mm -hmm, it is okay. And, and what I'm doing with my brush or that you can do with your stick, the back of your brush, is you're just pressing the yarn down into the glue like this. And then I'm gonna keep going with the yarn. You can cut it and do layers. Like you can have tiny, like bunches of tiny little pieces of yarn, or you can just, um, you can keep bending it. Again, it just depends on what your shape is like. If your shape gets really bendy, it's better to cut it because it releases the tension in the bend of the yarn. All right. So I'm just filling in this heart here with the yarn, pressing it into the glue. You can use your finger, you can use the back of your brush, you can use that um, um, stick if you want to. And if you, if you need more glue, put more glue on. Just be careful not to put too much glue because if you get too much glue on there, then when you press the yarn in, it's gonna wanna squeeze out and then you're just gonna have a gluey mess and it's gonna stick to every single thing that you use to touch it with. And then you're gonna get frustrated. Okay, so the other thing the stick is good for is just pressing the yarn down. So I'm gonna put it in back into that heart shape and I'm just gonna press it down and press it down with your fingers. You can use the broad side of the stick and press it like this. Just go across. Okay. So you can even see how the point of the heart at the bottom is rounded out and it's not super sharp. So if you wanna release the tension of that string, I could have come down this side with one piece of string and cut it at the bottom and then started a new string so that the string would have more of a point instead of that rounded bottom that you're kind of seeing here from the tension. Okay. We have a question about um, the glue. If we don't have um, uh, paintbrushes, how can we apply the glue? So you, I mean, your hands are a magical thing and the glue is not gonna hurt you. It just gets a little sticky. You can use one finger on one hand to put the glue down or you can use a popsicle stick to put the glue down. Um, might I would be just, a tricky. it might be a little tricky, that's right. I would just, I would just say that if you use your finger, just make sure that that's the sticky glue finger and you're not using it to touch the top of your yarn when you're pressing the yarn down onto the glue because then you're gonna create two sticky layers, right? And then instead of the string sticking to the glue, your finger is gonna wanna pull the string back up. So. That's why we use the stick. That's why we use the back of, you know, the brush. You can use a pencil, back of a pencil will work too. All right, so see, I have a tricky little piece that keeps wanting to come undone. That's okay. So don't let a little piece of yarn frustrate you because sometimes you need to let the whole thing kind of glue and set up. And then you can come back with a tiny little bit of glue and put it under the pieces that don't wanna lay down and you can glue just that piece and it's not gonna mess up the rest. Cause sometimes when you, when you get frustrated and you get to messing with it, it wants to move the, move the yarn all around. Okay, are you ready for your next? Oh, you wanna do purple? I, would, I wouldn't cut it yet. I would use a little bit of purple and see how much you need and then you can cut it, okay? You wanna do, you wanna paint on your glue? Mm -hmm. Okay, here, hold the brush, put the scissors down and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue around the outside and see, See how we talked about your template? See how your template's a little off on this mm -hmm. side? We're not gonna worry about your template. Your template is just a guide. So we're just gonna uh -huh. go around with the glue and you're gonna brush it so that it's even. You're gonna brush it right up next to the heart and you're gonna keep an even amount all the way around. Okay, I'm gonna get started on mine too. I'm gonna start with this small circle here and just pour a puddle of glue and then I'll brush it out. So see for a circle about the size of a silver dollar, I put about a nickel's worth of glue in there. All right. What happens if you like paint it onto this side of the tube? It doesn't matter, it'll dry. Now try not to get it too crazy because you just don't wanna get your hand in it, you know? But if you get outside of that line a little, that is not a big deal at all. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna move the glue around and fill up my shape. Just like that. And again, don't move it, don't swish it so much that um, you lose um, the glue. You want it to be nice and wet. All right, what color should I start? I think I'm gonna start with yellow maybe. So we have a suggestion um, for applying the, the glue, um, cotton swabs, which is something that most people have lying around in their house. You, yeah, could, yeah, you could use um, like the cotton swab sticks. Um, just keep in mind glue sticky and cotton is the, similar to yarn. And what's gonna happen is the cotton from the end of that swab is gonna want to stick into the glue. So you might get a little bit of cotton left over in your glue. So just keep that in mind. The more glue you put on there though, the less it'll wanna do that. If you move it around while it's really wet, um, it'll do better than if you start to let it dry. And the other thing is don't pull your yarn too tight because yarn is very, very stretchy, right? So if you pull it too tight, the ring is gonna wanna, it's gonna wanna constrict in the middle. So if you start pulling on that yarn, it's gonna like flip up over the edge. So you just wanna gently coax it around and around and around your shape. Not applying, you only wanna pull out enough tension or pull, pull enough tension that the white of the canvas disappears and no more. How's it going, Zoe? Would you want to cut it like here? Um, yeah, sure. Start there. You can cut it there. And then you can just start laying your string around your heart. But I don't know how to do that. Okay. Why don't you it start? It's tricky. It is a little tricky, but I promise you'll get it. Okay. I so got you, it on this one. It's, it's all right. That's totally fine. So we're going to start with the pointy part at the top. And then remember how we talked about using our stick? So you're going to hold it with your stick. And then you're just going to smush it with your stick. Smush, smush while you move the string. Smush, 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 smush along the heart. Okay. And then when you get there, you're going to go up the other side. Smush, 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 smush. And you want me to cut it right there? Uh, yeah. And then you'll do it again? Okay. So now, now you're going to do one. So see, this, is, this technique, I, again, I think might be easier um, if you're doing a... a shape with lots of complicated edges just because it releases the tension of the string and it'll makes it better to manipulate for a circle like i'm doing it's like infinite you can just keep going around and around and around it's not sticking though. it's okay you gotta put it down and hold it with your stick not your finger hold it right like that don't let up and then you're just gonna gently pull your string around and then you can start sticking it Sorry, it's because your stick got glue on it. So if your stick gets glue on it, it's gonna wanna pull that yarn back up. So you just turn your stick over and use the other side or you can wash it off. So see, just tap, 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 there you go. You're doing good. So why don't you guys tell Jimena in the chat some of the things that you guys are doing for shapes on your canvas instead of circles and hearts. Or if you're doing circles and hearts, that's okay too. I like circles. Well, I know several people love um, Zoe's idea about the heart. Mm -hmm. So they're doing that. Let's see what else. We have squares. Okay. Someone is making an ocean. Um, someone is making oh. a face. Triangles, ovals, flowers. Um, cherries, stars, diamonds, suns, dogs, rainbows. Wow. All sorts of stuff. All right. So here is my first circle. And you can kind of see I stayed, I stayed within the line. But there's a little bit of white inside that side of the line and less on this side. That's OK. Like I was explaining earlier, it's really just a template and you're going to cover it up. So it's a guide for you to make that circle or yeah. heart or whatever that shape is. What do you need? Yeah, that one. The stick? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here you go. 
I'm going to hold. That's okay. And if you need to stop and put more glue on, if it stops sticking, which is I think what's happening to Zoe here, that's completely fine. You can take a pause. You can add a little bit more glue. Just remember not to let your brush dry out too much. You can just keep putting it in the water and just make sure that you get the water out before you go putting more glue in it or else it'll make your glue really runny and it won't want to stick. You want some more glue? Yes. Okay. Let's go here. Because I don't yep. know. I know it's not sticking right there, is it? No. Just put a little bit around the outside, okay? Okay. You want to do this part? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna dab it on there like this. Dab it on there. Put some more. It's okay, it'll dry. That's the other thing. If you get a little bit of glue on the top of your yarn, don't worry. The wonderful thing about these glues is they dry clear. So um, they, <laughs> they'll cover up all kinds of mistakes. See, you can't see a bit of glue on mine. I assure you, I got glue on the outside in a few places. All right, I'm gonna do my next color. Oh, this is hard. Yeah, it is not easy sometimes when you're doing those. You like those um, those complicated shapes, man. Okay. I think I'm gonna do this circle. Right we have a few more um, things. Aubrey did an eye heart art with some circles. That is so cool. Mm-hmm. We have ice cream, monsters, space, wow. lightning bolt, um, hands, pineapple, cats. Everyone's super creative here. Butterfly. You guys are swinging for the fences on your designs. I'm afraid. Yeah. Do you want me to cut it? Are you done? Well, it's, it's just that I'm not making a heart shape. Oh, I see. Here. It's not easy doing a heart shape. That's true, it's not. But you know what? So here's the other cool thing you can do is now, so if this point is as wide as you want, you can add yarn here to the top and you can make your shape bigger. And you can use the yarn to make your shape like this. See? And you can you can bring your, your little humps out with the yarn. You wanna do that? All right, I'm gonna start with my next color. So again, start in the middle, fold it down. Sometimes getting the spiral started can be the most difficult part because it wants to pull out. So you have to do like a couple of circles before it'll stay still on you. Okay. Now, while we're putting our yarn down, I'll tell you, this is only Monday of camp week two. So we have two more classes this week that have to do with yarn. So if you don't get your fill of yarn today, um, you can come back on Wednesday and Friday. And on Wednesday, we're gonna be doing the yarn butterfly. So that's where you take some craft sticks and pipe cleaners and you make a little butterfly and then the yarn, you weave around the sticks and that's what makes the butterfly wings. Oh, what is that other one that looks silly? Oh, on, <laughs> on Friday is the pom-pom birds. So you're making what? fuzzy fuzzy little birds out of yarn. You're making pom-poms. Uh, what? And then you're decorating them to look like poofy little birds. What? Doesn't that sound like fun? Yes. Yeah. Like a so you, a you need to put a little bit more glue down, I think. Okay. Okay. Here. And I just put the link in the chat so everyone can. Oh, great. So there's a cut and there's a couple of ways you can go about getting your supplies too. So, um, you know, if you joined us today and you didn't get the supply kit, that's okay. If, I mean, any of these classes that you want to do, if you have the supplies at home, that's totally fine. Um, but if you want to get the supplies, um, we sell the kits. You can buy them online for any of the individual weeks, or you can buy a kit that actually has the supplies for the entire camp. It's all four weeks, all 12, um, all 12 events, and you'll get a little booklet 
that talks about um, you know, how to complete each, each project. Um, and then the other way is you can go in our stores and uh, the stores have a nice little sheet of paper that shows a full list of the supplies by week. So you can pick up um, what you need depending on which classes you're going to come to. All right, so I'm gonna fill in the outs or the next ring. All right, remember you gotta dry that off really, really good. There you go. Cause you don't wanna get watery glue. So um, Jen, Catherine's asking if we can use pipe cleaners instead of yard, would that work? Um, you can use pipe cleaners, but just be prepared that if, if you think yarn is difficult to make complicated shapes, pipe cleaners are gonna possibly be more difficult because it has that wire in it. So you're not gonna be able to get really small like you could with yarn. Um, the advantage that you have is also the wire that's in the middle and where your yarn is going to kind of want to spring back to that loose shape. Um, your pipe cleaner, uh, if you bend it because of the, the wire that's inside, it will stay in that shape a little bit better than the yarn. But it's going to take quite a bit of pipe cleaners if you're doing a canvas this size. What is if it's a different kind of canvas. If it's a different kind of canvas, then it all depends on your canvas size. So if you did a really, really big canvas, it'd take a lot of yarn or a lot of pipe cleaners. But if you did a really, really tiny canvas, it'd go really fast and it wouldn't take a lot of supplies. Like this one? Yeah, this one's kind of a medium sized one. This isn't too terribly big. Okay. Can you help me do this? Yes, I can. I am almost done with this yellow circle here. And this this art, this takes patience. I mean, there's no there's no sugarcoating this one. Like this is just one that takes a little bit of time. Um, because you can't rush it. There's wet glue involved and you gotta you gotta go slow to get your pattern right. But um in the end, I mean, man, you end up with a really, really cool piece of art. All right, I'm almost done, Zoe, and then I'll be able to help you there with your heart. All right. So as you get to the outside of your shape, that's where I've been cutting. So I just take the scissors and I kind of cut it at an angle because then the yarn is going to wrap and tuck in and it won't make a super blunt edge like it would if you just cut a straight line. I'm gonna put a little bit more glue here so it'll stick in better, but there we go. So you can kind of see how that edge gets tucked in because I cut it at just a little bit of an angle. So it doesn't make a really sharp stop in the yarn. You can still see a bump here and here but it's not nearly as dramatic if you, if you, as if you'd done a straight cut across. All right, so you want me to help you with this top part here? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna put some more glue. Let's do a big swipe of glue. And don't worry, if you put glue in a place and it dries, it's not a big deal. You put more glue over it. Um, I would just say, don't put gobs and gobs of glue because then it's gonna get real smushy when you start putting your yarn in it. What if you're really close to the water and, you, and then you accidentally get paint and you want glue? glue on the wall? If you get glue on the wall? Well, luckily we're using a water-based glue that will wash off. Thank goodness. Okay, so we're just gonna make a little hump here. I don't want it to be that I big. thought you were gonna make a heart. Oh, you don't want it to be that big? Because if it's that big, then then it would cover. Oh, those. we'll 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 make it we'll make them go outside so it won't be that big. It it won't look it won't look that big. All right, and then we're gonna do this one. Is that what you wanted? Yeah. Like that. Okay. Yeah. So see, we just um, Frankenstein this one to give it a different shape mid mid design here. So then what she can do is go in with more of the purple yarn and she can 
follow the out the new outline that she's created. And sometimes this is what happens is you'll design something, you'll start working with the yarn and you'll realize, hey, um, you know, it looks a little bit better if I do it differently or make it bigger or make it smaller sometimes. So like a couple of these, I'd only drawn one circle and then I thought it would look more interesting if I had a, a little skinny circle around this one. So that is something I added after I had drawn my design and actually started putting in the yarn. All right, so you want to keep- yarn is taking forever. I know, it takes a long time, doesn't it? But it's going to look so cool. I just cool. really want to draw. You just really want to draw? So do you want to finish the purple layer and then you want to draw your background? Yeah, but what if- so, so here's what you can do too. So if you, if you want your background to touch your yarn drawing, then you might actually color your background first and then you can do your yarn on top of it. So you can leave this part open and then put your yarn on top of it. Because if you try to draw after you've put the glue on, then your marker might get in your glue. So you wanna draw first. You wanna draw your background with the marker? Okay. All right, so we're gonna switch gears here on Zoe's. We're gonna take our markers and start working on the background. Yay. All right. So you work on your background and I'm gonna keep making my yarn. I'm gonna move this over here though, so I can use it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Red. All right, so I'm gonna make my purple circle now, I think. So Jen, just as you start that, um. Do you have any tips on how to start the circle in a way that the yarn won't come off? We have a few people having issues with that. Yep. So I'll I'll go over that one again. I'll do, um, let's see, I'll make this one right here green so that you can see it. Um, <clears throat> let me get my glue in here real quick. Why, how? Why do you make it this way? You, you gotta keep your marker out of the- I can't see the glue. Oh, okay. So look at it, look at it in the light. So you see how it look, see how it's shiny. Yeah. So you can come back when the glue is dry and you can draw on that part. So just draw on the parts that doesn't have the wet glue. I'm trying to make a rainbow. I know. Yep. And we'll fill in the parts of the rainbow that where the glue are after. Because you're gonna put yarn over that part. Remember, we're gonna make the layers yeah. of the heart. So just draw the part of the rainbow that you can, and then we'll go back and we'll put the yarn over it. Okay, so I'm gonna just put my glue all around the circle here. All right, now, <clears throat> you're starting in the, the very middle of your circle with your yarn, and I'm just putting the end of the yarn in the glue. I'm not laying the whole thing down yet. And I'm gonna try to use a pencil so you can see it a little bit better but I'm just gonna hold the yarn down with the end. I'm gonna push it down with the end of the pencil and you can make like a loop. See how I made a, a loop without actually laying it down in the glue yet. And then you hold tight to the middle and then you just start putting, putting your yarn down in it, right? And it doesn't have to be tight yet because once you get it kind of laid down in the glue in the cinnamon roll, then you can put your pencil down or whatever onto the yarn and then you can pull it tight and it's gonna pull around that center piece a little bit better. And you just keep going. And you gotta make a couple of circles to keep it from unraveling on you. And just keep working that, working that yarn around. and you can pull it tight and then put more down and then pull it tight and put more down. Just remember, don't pull it so tight that it comes up over the outside. There we go. See, Mom, now I got glue on my pencil. Mom, can you like, can you like get some buttons and stuff? Are we, get, are we doing full on mixed media at this point? Well, how about we do buttons a little bit later? You work with your markers and your yarn right now, and we'll um, embellish with buttons after. Is it, is it? So I don't have any buttons pulled out today, but we can find some. All right, so see, I'm just, I, I just kept working that spiral and holding 
holding on to the yarn, holding on to the yarn as I go around with my pencil. And if your pencil is not sticky like mine did, you can just wash it off. It happens so easily because that glue is everywhere. All right. And then just keep on going with your circle. I think I'm going to switch to my finger. This might be easier than a pencil right now. So we have a, a suggestion slash question here. Um, so if you water down the, uh, the glue with water, or obviously with water, um, and then dip the yarn into it first before um, doing circles, would that work? So there is a technique where you can dip your yarn in a glue and water solution and mold it into a shape and then let it dry. Um, it's a little bit different than what we're doing. I'm not saying you couldn't do that, but you're going to get a slightly different outcome. So for yarn, when it gets really saturated with the glue, it loses that fluffy, um, you know, fabric feel to it. And you'll have something that's a lot more plastic looking when you're done. So it'll change the dynamic of your canvas art just a little bit. Again, it's not a bad or a good thing. It's not something you should or shouldn't do. It's just, it is a different technique for getting yarn to stick down to something. Um, and if that's the option, if you're cool with the way that looks, then that's absolutely an option that you could do. A lot of people use that technique to do yarn wrapped cups and shapes like balloons. They'll um, do yarn, they'll do string dipped in a half and half glue water solution and they'll wrap it around like a balloon a whole bunch of times. And then when it dries, they'll pop the balloon and then you'll have this really cool uh, sphere that is made out of string. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and we have a question about um, if someone is trying to do a light color color theme, but they don't know a what light colored what theme 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 yeah. So um, they have lots of colors, um, but don't know what they should do for the background. Do you have any suggestions? So if you have it, um, I kind of have a clarifying question. So do you want the whole thing to be light colored or is your yarn light color and you want to know because your yarn's light colored, what color should I put on the background? I'll wait for the answer and read it okay. out loud. All right, cool. Because my answer is going to be different if you, if, depending on how you answer. Okay. All right, so this one's a really great example. I got, <laughs> I was not close to the center. I was probably off by um, an eighth of an inch from the center. So now that I've gotten, you can kind of see, so the yarn's touching the circle on one side, and then I've got about a quarter of an inch over here of my pattern left. So this is just a great example that you do not, like these patterns don't have to be perfect. And, and you know, you're gonna cover them up. They're there to help guide you. And if you want at any point to deviate from your pattern, you absolutely can. Um, it is just there to help guide you. So I'm gonna make my circle a little bit bigger than I'd intended because I'm, I wanna go to the outside of my template. And what about um, those pencil marks? Do you erase them after putting um, the yarn on them? Or oh, no. No, 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 no. They're, I mean, they're, they're gone, essentially. Like your, your yarn, your glue, like everything's gonna cover up those pencil lines. That's why, you know, it's not a big deal if, if they, they don't match exactly. Um, you know, what, is, what you see over here on Zoe's, she hasn't filled that in yet. So you, I would say, look at mine for an example, like you can't see any of the pencil lines that I've put in, especially like this one right here where there were multiple layers of pencil lines. Um, it's, all, it's all covered up by the yarn. So I'm just gonna go over my yarn circle gently with the broad side of my popsicle stick and I, that's just going to press that down evenly so that none of those yarn strands are bumping up outside of where they need to be. And then 
I'll be ready to let it dry. Okay, I think purple is my last circle here. And Zoe's working away on her background. Uh, looks like a rainbow. It is. I like it. So um, for the light color theme question, um, uh, they say I'm trying to do only my teal as a dark color. I don't know if that answers your question. So teal. Okay, so if you if you are using a dark color, then I would say um, it sounds it sounds to me like you're asking about the background. Um, if you're I'll, I'll go back to my my original example here. If you're using a light colored yarn for your pattern or even more than one light colored yarn. So like these are kind of two light colors here and, and that's okay um, to put two light colors or how many of our light colors together. But your background, if you want the, those light colors to really stand out, the darker the background, the more those light colors are gonna pop and stand out against um, you know, your canvas. And the, the same is true for the light background. So if you wanna do a light background, you're gonna put your darker color. So notice I have red and yellow, which is a light and red and yellow, which is a light, but I have them on both sides. The way I got away with that, and the reason why this looks so interesting is I wrapped that little bullseye of green or the green around the bullseye here of yellow and red. And so that green really contrasts hard with the white and the yellow, and it really makes that stand out against the canvas. So back to your question, if you're using a light pink and you have a teal yarn, you wanna put your lighter colors on the inside and your teal on the outside if you're gonna do a light color background. If you're doing a darker color background and that teal is very dark, I would flip that and say, put your teal on the inside, your light color on the outside, and then your background can be dark so that it's going light, dark, light, or dark, light, dark. That makes a lot of sense. All right. Now we've got purple. We have a great idea here. Someone is making a, is adding googly eyes and the shape kind of looks like a sea creature or an octopus. Oh, I love it. I love when people use googly eyes on anything. They make everything look way more interesting. Yes, they add just the right amount of whimsy. They sure do. All right, so same technique for those of you guys who are asking earlier here. We're gonna do, um, we're starting in the middle. So I've laid my string down in the middle. I'm gonna hold it and just get like a quick little loop going on here and then keep holding the middle while I pull the string around and just dab it into the, into the glue and I'm gonna make another loop. Just keep pulling it, slowly pull it a little tighter so that the white goes away, but it, you're pulling it not so tight that the string pops up over the inside pieces of string. And then you just keep pressing it around the outside. So see, that didn't take very long at all for that one. This one was more nimble than the green. And you just keep feeding it around the outside, just tight enough that the white is gone, not so tight that the string pulls up over the side. And this is one of the reasons, the, the fact that I'm doing circles is one of the biggest reasons that I like to cut my string free from the big skein and make these little bitty loops here is because when you make a bunch of concentric circles like this, like a spiral, your string wants to twist. And if you're tied down to a big old skein of yarn that's not moving, then the twist creates these little loops down your string and it makes it harder the longer you go and the bigger your circle is. So by letting it just kind of hang loose in the floor right now, every time I make a twist, it naturally un untwists down the line and it doesn't create those little kinks in my, in my string or in my yarn. Okay, we're almost done here with purple. 
And I think I might do purple around that yellow one over there. I didn't put a little circle around it, but it's looking kind of lonely all by itself. What about this one? I think I'm going to put green around that one. We didn't do that one. You're right. I haven't done that one yet. I got to do that one before. Uh oh, I got glue on the end of my pencil. When is this going to dry and why is this over? We'll, we'll, we'll fix, we'll fill that in in just a minute. Um, and it takes a little bit to dry. It takes, um, you know, it, it sets up actually in a few minutes, but to really dry, especially if you had to use a lot of glue, it takes, um, you know, it could take up to about an hour to really set so that it's not gonna move. And here's another thing that we haven't talked about yet. If you ever get to a point, cause this happened to me earlier when I was making this other piece, if you lay something down, like a string down and you're like, man, that, that did not lay down like I wanted it to, or it's not the right shape that I wanted, or you get too much glue on your string and you just want to start over, that is completely fine. And it is okay to just pull all that yarn you just put on that shape right back off, throw it in the trash and cut a new piece and start over. Like, but it, it might take it might take some time, but sometimes you can get frustrated and waste a whole bunch of time being frustrated and trying to make it do what you want when it's not going to do what you want it to do. All right, so we're going to tuck that in. I'm going to take my stick and just go over it and squish it down. I love how this flat stick makes it so even and flat across. It's so satisfying. It's kind of like making a pizza. Just what? kind of, I know, isn't that cool? It just kind of squishes out and it's perfectly flat all the way it's across. Weird and it's weird. <laughs> yeah. oh, it sounds like a good description for me. All right. Now I'm going to put, so this is the one I was just saying. I think even though I don't have a circle drawn around this one, I think I've decided I'm going to put a little circle around it. So I'm going to use this smaller brush so that it's more precise. And I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of glue around the outside of this yellow circle. And we're gonna do a layer of purple. All right, how's everybody doing? Are we, do you guys, are you guys like halfway through with your design? Are you all the way done with your design? I'd love to know where you guys are at. Actually, we have a lot of people asking about the background. Okay. So you're at that point. Yeah. So the background, if you're going to do the yarn, um, this is another one where it can be, you can add complicated elements to it that, that make the background more complex than if you're just doing simple circles. So like, I, because I, <laughs> because I put like this diagonal line through mine, it gave me more corners, right? So if I had just left the circles, I could have taken one color and just gone out and out and out and out around the circle and stopped when I hit the edge and then did it around all the circles. But because I wanted to give it this interesting two-tone color, I made a line down the middle and, um, and it gave me corners here, 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 and here that I wouldn't have otherwise had. So just keep that in mind. I'll probably do it again because I really like the way it looks. Are you done? So, so well, after you put the purple on, mm -hmm. I went yellow and green. Okay. Do you want to do some more purple or is that your way of telling me you want me to put the purple on? I want you to put the purple on. <laughs> That's what I thought. Well, That's what I thought. Okay. Let me finish this. And tell me when, when we're done with the yarn because I'm going to put buttons on. Oh, you're going to put buttons on. Okay. I like that. All right. I'm just going to do a quick circle here with the purple. And then I'll do a quick circle with the green. And then we'll be ready to start on the background. Okay. Let me go around. I think I'm going to go around one more time. Actually, yeah, I'm going to go around one more time. All right, last time around here with the purple. So 
could you, um, as you do that, explain again how you flatten it with a pop popsicle stick? Yes. So I'm just taking the flat side of the popsicle stick, you know, so not not the short edge, but the just laying it down flat and and just pressing it across. I try not to drag too much. I like to press it, which is hard to do if I'm holding canvas. Oh no, you got stuff all over you. Um, so I just take both sides, I hold it by both sides and I just press, sorry, I'm gonna tuck that tail in. I just press down along the top here like this, just pressing down. And what that does is it flattens all the strands out and it gives you, and then you, then you can run it over the top because then you don't have anything sticking up. So if you, um, if you're not careful, if you start from the beginning and you start swirling it around, you can catch the edge of the string sometimes and pull it up. <clears throat> what are you gonna put on there, stars? Okay. A sun. Oh, that's a star. Where are you gonna put it? Um, it's like a sun. So you wanna put it over there? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so we're gonna put a little bit of glue on the inside because that's the high point and then you put it where you want, okay? okay. But remember, once it goes down, that's where it is. Okay. okay. It's not going there. down. Okay, just leave it. You gotta leave, you gotta let it dry. That's as far down as it's gonna go. Okay, all right. I'm gonna do this last circle so we can get started on the background. And the background may take you a while. Um, you know, we it may be even longer than what we have here. It will be longer than what we have here, but that's okay. And and again, if you don't want to do the background, that's all right. You can always draw your background on. Um, or you can leave it like this. If you did dark, dark colors or dark, dark shapes, um, you can leave this canvas white and that would still look very, very good. So um, the background is up to you. All right, I'm gonna do this little stripe of green here and then I'll get started on my background so that you guys can kind of see the process. It's very similar to what we've just done. And then um, it's the it's, same what we just done. Yeah, it is the same as what we just, just did, isn't it? Why did you say it's similar? Well, it is similar. It's the similar, it's kind of the same. Do you it, it can be a little different. For me, it's different because I'm doing circles and my background's not a circle. My background is more angular. Okay. Do we have any more questions while I'm doing this last little circle? Um, yes, so Christine would like to know which um, age group uh, would you consider this um, this art to be for? Um, I mean, this is something that you can do together with kids that are, I mean, I would say four and up uh, easily. I don't know that I would attempt this uh, with much younger than that. And again, like any of these projects, it, you, you, you know your kids and um, you know their their abilities and their um, you know the things that they're interested in. Like I can tell you for Zoe, um, if she, if it's something that she's more personally interested in, she's going to be you know she's going to pay more attention and she's going to be more engaged in the project and um, than if it's something that she doesn't really care about. So. So it's, it's hard with ages because age also can mean different things. Like could, you know, a four-year-old do it all by themselves without any help? Probably not. But then again, um, you know, a six or seven-year-old might also need some amount of help um, to do a project like this. So it's just, it's just going to vary. It's going to be based on, you know, your kid, what they like and what you know that they're comfortable doing as far as crafts are concerned. Um, but I would say four is as young as I would probably go personally. Um, but, but again, my, my bias is toward my kids. So I know what they could have handled at that age. That makes perfect sense. All right, I'm all done with the green here. I'm just gonna press it. Oh, see, I need a little bit more glue, it looks like. Just gonna do a little bit right at the end. That's the other reason that I just love 
It says glitter and sequin, but let's be honest, I use this for just about everything. Um, I love this glue. I love the tiny little applicator tip on the end and it's just, it's really good glue too. All right, now I'm gonna take my stick. I'm gonna do the thing where I press it down, press it down, press it down, press it down. And like we talked about, if there's any part of these that you're like, man, I can kind of see why, you know, you can, somebody gave the example of you can color it in with marker or you can go back with glue and a little bit of yarn later, depending on how big the gap is um, and fill it in. Like you can see a little bit of white showing through on a couple of these spirals. Um, you know, you can go back and fill it in with more yarn or you can put a marker in it or you can leave it alone and appreciate it for what it is. All right, so now we are done um, with the, the shapes themselves and we're gonna do the background. I'll show you how to do the background real quick. Um, let me grab a ruler because I just realized I haven't drawn my line. So since I'm gonna do a diagonal and I'm gonna do it like I did last time where I make it a little off and I didn't go exactly corner to corner. I'm trying to make it, you know, interesting to look at here. Okay. So I just drew a line through the middle kind of, of my piece. And that's going to be my marker for light and dark. Actually, I think I changed my mind. See, look at that. Change my mind. I'm going to do it this way. I don't have to erase these, but I'm going to. All right, I'm going to go this way just so I don't confuse myself. That's why I erased them. Um, okay, I'm going to go through the purple because, like we talked about earlier, the purple looks best with the light and the dark better than the green because the green. And the black, that green is so dark, it, it doesn't really pop well against the, um, the black. All right, so I'm going to do my, I'm going to start with my white. I'm going to take a little bit of yarn. All right, so this, this is only slightly different from your shape. So before with your shape, like you were kind of putting glue in each section of your shape, right? So this is different because this is a much larger area that you're having to fill. So the big thing here is I know that I want to bring my line across here in the middle and I want to work my way down to the corner. You can work this however you want. This is just how I like to work it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue. I'm just going to trace basically the general area that I want to put my yarn. And then I'm gonna take my brush after I get all the water out of it. I'm gonna take my brush and go smooth it out. Against that line. And get it up against your other shapes. Make sure it's nice and covered in those corners because that's going to be the more difficult area because like we talked about with the tension and the yarn. And again, if, if you find that your shapes are too tight and the yarn wants to bend out of that shape, I would just recommend cutting it. When you get to one of those points, just snip it instead of trying to make it bend to your will, so to speak. All right, so I'm going to the, the right hand side and I'm going to move across this way since my yarn is sitting over here to the left. If it was over on the right side, I'd do it the opposite way <clears throat> just because I don't want to drag my yarn through the glue. All right, so when I get to my shape, th this is where I need my yarn to bend. So this is where I'm holding it down with that popsicle stick or pencil or your finger if you want to. Um, and then just just like I built my shape, I'm not pulling so tight that the string really stretches, but I'm pulling out just enough of the tension that there's no white canvas, and it's kind of hard to tell because I'm using a white string, um, between the shape and my new background. 
So again, when I get to this corner, it's a tight turn. I'm just going to pull the string with my hand and notice how I held it in place with my stick. And the reason why I did that is, is if you start to pull it, it's just going to want to pull out into a straight line. So it's important to get it to stay in that shape for just a little bit. Really hold it down with your stick and then you can place it and then you're going to go to the next corner and do the same thing. You're just holding it there with that stick and then placing your string while you hold it so it doesn't want to pull out of that shape. And that's really the big key for when you're, you're maneuvering difficult angles on your canvas. And then I just take it all the way out to the side. And what I do is I cut when I get to the edge. Now, again, you can do this however you want, but I find that the tension in the string when you get to the edge, if you try to bring it back, it creates these little bubbles because it bubbles the yarn out and it kind of messes up your straight line. So my preferred technique is to do one solid line across the canvas and then come back and do another. Again, if you weren't doing multiple colors, you could spiral out with your background color to match your shape. So if you did a heart or a star or whatever, you can just create that pattern again and again and again with your background color. All right, I'm gonna do a couple more of these while you guys wrap up any questions you have. Like I said, we won't get through the background today. The background takes, it can take a little bit of time um, if you're doing a full yarn background. You can also do a multi, you know, background where you do some uh, with the marker and you do some with the yarn. Just be creative. Do what looks good to you. Um, so we do have a follow-up question from um, Christine about the age groups. So if you want to use this project um, for like a day camp scenario with kids, with kids aged four to six, um, it's about eight, eight kids. What suggestions or, you know, any, any, any tips, tricks that you could share? So if I were working exclusively with that age group and, um, so I would, I would guess that obviously the minimum adult you would have is one. Um, so assuming the worst case scenario, hopefully there's more than one adult there that can help that, that number. Um, I would say don't do the yarn background, only do the yarn shapes and stick with the most simple shapes possible, which in my personal opinion is a circle because it the, the way the yarn works lends itself to the circle best. I mean, obviously it's a circle, you wind it in a circle. So it, it just wants to be in a circle and this is definitely the best. And I would, I would focus on kind of what we talked about where we talk about lights and darks and you can kind of, you know, show them how, you know, putting different colors next to each other gives you a different effect. And you could even use yarn colors that are, are like a gradient, like an ombre uh, um, where you're using a light and you gradually get darker and it's a monochromatic color. So it's all blue maybe. Um, but I would avoid doing the background unless you want to do like coloring background. So Zoe, Zoe six, I mean, um, you know, she can do the yarn part. Um, personally, yarn's not her favorite thing. So like sometimes yarn, you know, she gets bored. You heard her say it. I'm pretty sure she said, you know, it's, it's long. Like that's Zoe speak for this is boring me, mom. Um, <laughs> so I think, you know, I, I would just simplify it. It's not that you couldn't do it for that age group, but you certainly wouldn't want to go the more complex route with difficult shapes like a heart. Um, you know, so maybe set them up and say, instead of like I did where I said, yeah, pick whatever shape you want. You know, if, if the direction is we're going to do circles, we're going to talk about colors and you kind of make it a little bit more about colors and color theory and how it looks together. Um, that's probably the better way to go for that age group. Perfect. We just have a couple other questions. Um, so does it make a difference um, as far as, uh, you know, with working with the glue, if the yarn is, um, um, what's it called, cotton, cotton as opposed to synthetic? No, it shouldn't make a difference. Okay. 
The only difference that you'll find when you start to get into yarn varieties is if you get into the chunky type of yarn that has a lot of uh, yarn, I, I mean, I want to call it chunks. It looks like the different threads of yarns has different uh, thickness, have different thicknesses. And so it creates like this variation within the yarn strand itself. That is the only yarn that you could use that would make this a little complicated. And the reason why is if you get one of those bigger pieces, it's going to push the yarn up off the canvas and essentially out of the glue that you're trying to lay it in. So I would say the easier yarn is going to be something that is a smoother yarn. Okay. And um, for the background, do you recommend starting with the shapes like working from the inside out or could we start from the corners in or does it make no difference? Um, I, I think, like I said earlier, it, there's a little bit of this that's just going to be personal preference and trial and error. Like, um, you know, I, I personally like to work from the inside out of my shape. And the reason why is I find that it's easier to apply the glue when I'm working from in out. And, and I also find that on the background, like working from, you know, what would have been corner to corner had I not you know, dissected it into two halves. So I'm essentially working from corner to corner and then I'm gonna work from corner to corner. Actually, I'm gonna turn it around this way and I'm gonna go big to small. Um, but, you know, you, you kind of find what works for you. And and I think most importantly, like if, if there's something that you lay down that you're like, ah, it's not laying down like I want and you wanna redo it. Like there's a, there were a couple of times over here where I got into some areas that were really tight where the yarn, like you start to run into these super awkward shapes that are left. I mean, when, once you lay in a certain amount, like this section here and here, those are basically like two dozen straight lines of yarn. It's like little yarn cut, little yarn cut, little yarn cut. And I just, and it got shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And so like, it can get frustrating in some pieces like this, you know, cause it starts to stick to you just pull it off, throw it away, get a fresh piece of yarn, get a new popsicle stick, start over. It makes life a lot easier. Perfect. Um, I think that's it for questions. We have a comment here. Great class. Enjoyed seeing the art being created by mom and child. And awesome. also love that the art is so flexible that any medium can be used. Yeah, yeah. That's, I uh, mean, that's my favorite part is you know, I love that you guys come on here and it, I love that it's okay that not everybody has the exact same supplies. I mean, that's, that's the nature of crafts and like the wonderful part about crafts is I think just being, having that flexibility. And I think, you know, creativity is really born out of those moments when um, you're forced to kind of find a different way to do things. So I, I really appreciate you guys coming to the class today. And I'm, love teaching these classes. Once again, Zoe has abandoned me. <laughs> so it's just me. Um, but, you know, I really appreciate that you guys come and craft with us. I know she looks forward to it and I look forward to it. And um, I'm really glad you joined us for camp. So if you didn't hear me saying earlier, this week is yarn week. So it's yay for yarn. We kicked it off with the yarn canvas, um, you know, the yarn art. And, um, Tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but Wednesday, we'll be doing the yarn butterflies, and then on Friday, uh, the yarn pom-poms. And then next week is actually paper crafting. So it's three different paper craft projects. We're going to do a butterfly mask, a paper composition, and then a caterpillar butterfly paper scene. And then the final week of camp, week four, is going to be um, fine art. So it's going to be painting. We're going to do a paint pull. Um, we have a watercolor and then a dot painting. So I hope you can join us for all of the camps, if not all of them, hopefully some more. Um, again, I think I'm gonna say earlier, you can find uh, the recordings on michaels.com slash classes. She has dropped a couple of um, links in the chat that you can check out. You can go to michaels.com slash camp creatology and you can find a full listing of all the classes, all the supplies. You can sign up for any and all that you want to sign up for. So we hope we see you here um, uh, again. And if you want to show your work, 
you can take a picture of it um, or get your grown up to take a picture of it, put it on social media um, and hashtag it with make it with Michaels or hashtag uh, Michaels classes. So, all right. Thank you all again. And I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.